Last time on Dragon Ball Raido, Gohan and Piccolo ventured far into the room of spirit and time, though not for any kind of training, but in a bid to save Goku from the deadly heart virus. In this reality, there was no mysterious time-traveling youth to deliver a cure. Mr. Popo would suggest the Z Fighters discover a fabled world outside the hyperbolic time chamber itself, a world containing an evil god named Odin. But most important, someone named Erja, the Supreme Kai of Medicine. This video is part of an ongoing series. Catch it fully using the links below. And don't forget to support its creator, Guillaume Gillou. Beneath what appears to be a fossilized dinosaur skull, the cold air cuts through the frozen desert, their location completely exposed to any would-be bandits. Go on a piccolo sit beside a small, crackling fire, the former asleep after finally getting some dinner, while his guardian meditates, leading us to wonder, do Namekians actually ever sleep? When something about the boy gets Piccolo's attention. Even though he's asleep, he hasn't dropped his guard. A faint layer of energy surrounds him. For his age, this is nothing short of remarkable to the seasoned warrior. Laughing to himself, he finds it ironic that this is how Chi Chi's tough training has paid off. At least all that studying has disciplined his mind. A group of mysterious warriors tries to get the drop on our heroes when they are most vulnerable. But with a single kick, Piccolo makes it abundantly clear they're nobody to mess with, sending one of them flying and waking Gohan in the process. What do they want from the Z Fighters? Merely to rob them or something else? Unsheathing his sword, one of them finally bellows for the green man to surrender. They are the Wild Hunt, loyal soldiers of Lord Aisu. But particular statements aside, Piccolo knows. Actually, he's been listening to their nonsensical babble for hours now. They didn't even try to remain quiet while tracking him. This revelation shocks the soldier. Then again, who could have guessed those big ears did more than frame the Namekian's face? Little do they know, he's been tracking them long enough to gather all the intel he needs about their intentions. He knows they're up to no good. Another tells his apparent leader to look. The kid is carrying food. Teleporting over, this one stands barely taller than Gohan himself. He snarls for him to be a good boy and give him that bag as he reels back his arm. his efforts are… fruitless. The Vikingess commander shouts obscenities at our heroes for not simply lying down and letting them do as they please. He hollers they're going to pay for this! Kill them all! Shortly into the skirmish, even though vastly outnumbered, Piccolo quickly notices these guys are approximately zero threat. They're much stronger than the normal humans on Earth back home, but they're in no way a serious threat to himself. No danger to Gohan either. After seeing Gohan easily handle his opponent, Piccolo has all the information he needs. They are just as weak as he expected, which means... Huh, I don't need you anymore. <laughs> Pretty easily able to down the lot of them. 
The leader appears undeterred. In fact, he starts laughing. He cackles that they have no idea who they're messing with. The boss is going to use the key! <laughs> Die! Pathetic. What? No way! I've had enough of you. Now cowering in fear, the leader of the soldiers trembles in his mind that nobody has used key here for centuries. He wonders where the hell all these guys are from. You're going to get a taste. Of my new technique! Their aggressors dealt with. The icy tundra crunches beneath Piccolo's feet. He takes his time to confront the Viking warriors. Though eventually, he towers over the leader of the gang. While he still clings to life, Piccolo extends his arm to command they are here to confront the one called Odin. Not them. These fools simply and willingly jumped into the fire by attacking the two of them. He will reveal where to find Odin or he will die. But Odin, the fiend can't believe what he's hearing. So much so, he begins to bellow out with laughter despite his massive injuries. He argues that Odin is their god. He is the literal creator of this world. He can destroy an entire galaxy in the blink of an eye. And they want to fight him. There is no one who could ever hope to stand a chance against him. They are morons. The pair of them together aren't even close to matching the power of his earthly incarnation, Lord Aisu. Even in a state which is merely a fraction of his full power, in his presence, they are mere insects. His earthly incarnation? This isn't something Piccolo considered before. The man continues. He asks, or rather can tell they aren't from here. They are far out of their element and have no idea what they've stepped into. They're doomed. As soon as the Wild Hunt encountered them, their fates were sealed. Thanks to Odin's mighty power, Lord Aisu knows they're here now. He sees everything within this world. He's already started the hunt to track them down, and when he finds them, he's going to. Having had enough of his babbling, Piccolo decides to put an end to the man. Gohan says aloud, humans who can sense and use ki, even knowing how to fly. He didn't expect that here. His mentor urges they must expect anything and gather as much information as they can as fast as they can. His father is counting on them. Even if this place is running on a much slower clock than the outside world, there's no telling how much longer Goku has. He then explains to Gohan how he let these idiots attack them for solely that reason. He wasn't sure if they were masking their energy or simply as weak as they appeared. But one way or another, they need any and all knowledge they can obtain. They are in completely uncharted territory. That's when Gohan has the bright idea of simply tracking down this Lord Aisu guy. Surely he'll know everything they need. They can confront him and have him reveal all the information about this place. Piccolo agrees. Aisu is likely connected to Erja. In a previous chapter and video, misspelled and mispronounced as Air, the legendary healer they're looking for, the Supreme Kai of Medicine. However, something is bothering him. The strange key of this guy. Although this warrior couldn't control it, Piccolo felt a tremendous power flowing out of him. Gohan felt it too. It was… glacial. Nothing like he's ever felt from anyone back home. The entire aura was so strange. The boy then tries to quell his mentor's concerns. After all, those guys were really weak, right? Though despite his calls, his elder is silent. Go on! Get your things! We have to-
die, Namek. But Namek, how does this guy even know what Namekians are? It's nearby. Gohan screams for the figure not to touch Piccolo. 